Well, hello again. Our coil spring is looking uh, a whole lot better. After I, I, I used up all my rust reformer I had in that can, <laughs> it, took, it barely had enough to cover it with two coats. Of course, after I washed it and cleaned it and I took alcohol to it and everything, there wasn't that much rust to remove anyway. Just some basic surface rust. So this will look pretty good uh, as soon as I, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to flip it over and finish putting some of this uh, black primer on and then uh, I'll go ahead and shoot it with some shiny gloss black and see how it looks and however it turns out, it turns out. Let's get back to our carburetors for a few minutes. Uh, this is the Holly that was on the engine. I have removed it and I'm going to show you why. Watch this little short clip. All I had was a rod from the gas pedal straight over to the side of the carburetor. Well, as you can see, only one rod was connected. It was connected right here. The secondary on the Holly was not connected at all. It was just floating there. I guess the idea here was to run with the front two barrels. They would get better gas mileage when actually they were defeating themselves and doing it. Because normally when you ride around town, you only use the front two barrels anyway. But, you know, this is... The setup they did, they just got it running. And I've seen that happen so many times. You'll get someone who, you know, I'm going to change this carburetor, you know, and they don't even think about what it's going to entail. So they get it, they put it on the car, and they go, oh, man, none of this linkage matches up. Well, let me see, what can I do? I, I guess if I just eliminate this part of the old stuff and just, just hook this up, I can just get it to work. Uh, this dash pot was missing because uh, the old carburetor, did, you know, it wouldn't fit on this one here. So they got rid of that too. So we wound up with just that one throttle rod. That was it to run the entire carburetor. And you can't do that. The Autolite 4100 on the 390 uh, engine, and, and in our case, the Thunderbird, the 66 Thunderbird, it not only it, it has a kick down lever that when you stomp on the gas, which I'm not going to be doing anyway, but that's not the point. You stomp on the gas and it throws the car into passing gear. And it goes down to the transmission, and it hooks to a bracket up on top, on the back of the engine. And uh, I think I showed you that bracket in the video. If not, I'm, I'm going to go back out there and cover it again. There's nothing there. The only thing that was there, I mean, that kickdown bracket is just not even connected at all. There's no springs on it, no throttle spring, no uh, uh, kickdown return spring, I think they call it. This carburetor was stripped down to nothing, so, you know, just buying a carburetor and stripping it, you know, slapping it on an engine sometimes just, unless you know what you're doing, that's the kind of setup you're going to wind up having to do. And it's just so amateurish, so dumb, but as you know, if you got a customer that knows, or a friend that knows nothing about cars, he says, I need you to put this on because my carburetor is all messed up. And then you say, oh yeah, okay, I can do it. But then, you know, he comes back and it's run into his satisfaction. He thinks you're a genius. You know, oh my God, the guy knows everything about cars. Not true in all cases, okay? Now here's that bracket I was telling you about. And uh, right here is that kick down lever that goes down to the uh, transmission. And it just comes up and it's connected right there and that's as far as it goes. There's nothing, there's supposed to be a rod coming out of this hole. There is no rod, there's no spring here. Uh, this is your throttle from your gas pedal. That's all we had, okay? Couple of springs missing. There's a bracket on the uh, bracket on the carburetor itself that was not there. I don't know. I guess they just threw away all the parts. I wish they hadn't done that. Would have been nice if they had kept them. It would save me a little money, but that's the way it goes. Uh, new parts have been ordered. We're going to make this thing righteous. I had to go to uh, uh, Thunderbird headquarters this time out in California. Brendan, uh, well, you know, while I was doing all the heavy lifting here as usual. Old Brendan's up there, you know, sucking down them bonbons and watching TV over his shoulder while he's searching for parts and things. And he found all the parts offered by Thunderbird headquarters. And he said, John, here it is right here. You need to get all this stuff and get it on. And I said, okay. You know, but, but one more thing he pointed out, though, I thought was really neat. Uh, there were two different setups for the Autolite 4100 on the 390. Now here are the two different types of linkage setups on these 4100s for these Thunderbirds. This is uh, obviously an older setup. Same long rod that comes out, but the spring goes over here and hooks. This is uh, missing. Well, there's a different, there's a bracket right here that's missing on the back of the uh, dash pot that I have that has the spring that hooks here. Currently, uh, they have a spring here 
It runs all the way down and connects down here on the front of the manifold, on the very front of the engine on the manifold. The spring is really stretched out. So what you have here, this looks like a, a spring inside of a rod. It's not. The rod is running parallel to the spring. So that's a little bit different. Uh, one, and the, from this one here that we have, this is ours right here. And as you can see, it, it even still is a little bit different from the one I have. This is the transmission rod and uh, our, our throttle rod with a spring that comes up here. But uh, you might have one or the other if you have a Thunderbird. I don't know. It all depends. Now here's a close-up of the one I have, uh, the bracket. They painted it conveniently gold for us, which was really nice. This is the rod coming up from the transmission here. And I had this long rod going out to the uh, carburetor. That's all we had. This spring is missing here. This bracket right here. Let me zoom in a little closer here. This bracket right here that holds the spring is missing. Uh, this little short rod that connects to the same point as the rear of the long rod, that, that rod was missing. This keeper was missing, and down here you see a spring. That spring goes down from the rear. I think that's, that's it right there. It hooks right there, comes down, it hooks to that bracket that goes to the rear uh, bolt of the manifold, which is down behind. It's not this one here. It's this down behind the manifold. So. These are the parts that uh, we're going to have to replace. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, educate some of the folks who, you know, have never seen a Holley carburetor either. Carburetors basically, very basically, are pretty much the same. Fuel comes in, fuel goes out, they have a float, they have a needle valve, they have a seat, they have an automatic choke, they have a vacuum driven uh, secondary, which I think this is what this is right here, whereas on the auto light it was mounted in the rear, the diaphragm that goes in and out. But, you know, the chokes, uh, I mean, the automatic choke works the, uh, I always call it a butterfly. I don't even know the real name of the stupid thing. But, you know, that it's a coil spring inside. In this case, it was heated, you know, just like it was on the auto light until I changed, until I plugged that baby off. And, you know, it closes your butterfly in the morning for you. And, of course, after it opens up, it, it stays open. But that's what it does. Exactly the same, almost, you know, and you got a float chamber in the front and a float chamber in the back. And the floats go up and down, up and down up and down up and down and uh, that's all there is to it it's all the same let's see what's on the other let me let me show you the bottom here there again see the bottom is pretty much the same you got your little venturi down there and of course your, I think that's your accelerator pump right there well I think it is the accelerator pump I can't remember it's been so long since I worked on a holly but you know it's when you uh, ours had that plastic that white plastic arm on it this one has the, uh, the metal and ours was mounted on the side this one's mounted on the bottom, and when you stomp on the gas, like so, and you open up everything, uh, notice that that accelerator pump's not working so hot. <laughs> anyway, there again, look at, look at the color. <laughs> look at the color you see right here. It's kind of a reddish kind of color, orange, reddish kind of stuff. That's lead from the old gasoline that we used to have. That's all lead. Look at the color of that screw. That's where there's been gas leakage and whatnot, and the lead would get out all over. Usually the Venturi are pretty much colored the same way, but I don't know. Now, when I said earlier that the secondaries on this thing weren't operating, weren't connected, so therefore they weren't operating, this is what I was talking about. Pretty grungy down in there, huh? Oh, well, anyway, that's just, just to give you an idea of what a, the basic, very basic differences between a Holley and a Motorcraft or Autolite 4100, whichever you want to call it. You know, if I'd have thought about it sooner, I could have sent this spring up there to Buzz 1151 up there in Portland. You know that uh, Antifa wannabe guy. He could have taken a few of his, you know, a few more of his wife's stainless steel kitchen knives. He could have just electroplated this with stainless steel. Man, that would have been great. I don't know why I didn't think about it. You know, you snooze, you lose. All right, let's see if I can make this thing look halfway decent. I don't think so, but we're going to give it the old college try. As long as it looks better than it did, which it already does, but I kind of like to make it look nice, with you know, to kind of match up the rest of the stuff. As soon as, soon as I go through the first mud puddle, it'll all look terrible again. 
Well, that's about as good as she's going to get, folks. I have a little bit of paint left in the can. Now, I'll let this thing dry completely and see if I missed any spots. I don't want to use the entire can up. But, you know, a lot better than it was. She'll be ready to go back in the car when the time comes. As soon as wifey tells me I can get off the wallet and buy the big stuff, it's going to be pretty costly. But, yeah, it's a one-time buy for one side of the car, one-time buy for the other, and it's all done. I'll never have to do it again. So, I don't know. Best I could do. Well, this is going to be the fourth attempt to get this old fuel pump on the side of that engine. There's just absolutely no room up in there to work. I, I, there's something wrong, something I'm missing. Anyway, you know, this time I'm not going to dance out to the middle of the ring. I'm coming out wailing. Well, guess what? One of my primary problems has been uh, having access to this bottom hole over here. You know, I, I can't get to it. There's just no room to get up in there. Once this thing is up and mounted on the side uh, of the uh, timing chain cover, I can't I can't get this. By the way, the timing chain cover is made out of aluminum, which is really a stupid thing to do with steel bolts and aluminum holes. And anyway, I'm going to... It's diff so difficult to get up over the top of this thing up there to get the bolt in. And that, there's just no room. There's no room at all. However, I did get lucky. I have discovered... Thinking like a design engineer paid off a little bit here. Look at that hole right there. It goes right through the uh, unibody. That hole right there gives me access straight through, all the way straight through, uh, with a long a couple, you know, a couple of long extensions on a ratchet. Gives me access to the. Where's my? Where am I at here? Gives me access to the left side of this thing. Hadn't even noticed it up until now. So let's see what we can do now. Well, the old fuel pump wins again. Uh, I had it almost, but then I discovered that one of the one of the bolt holes going into the aluminum timing chain cover that this thing here connects to. This thing connects to the timing chain cover just like that, and that left hole on the bottom down there is stripped out in the timing chain cover. It was probably partially stripped, and when I went to put the bolt back in, it never did tighten it up. It just kept going around and around and around. So I probably finished it off. <laughs> well, that's just wonderful. Now I've got a stripped out hole in the timing chain cover, but the biggest problem is this. When you, when you put your bolt in, uh, the old one, say, the old one, it, the, 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 uh, it would just line right up with the hole through the side of the... It's not the frame. It's actually the part of the unibody. There was a, a hole there that lined up exactly right where you could stick your extension all the way through and that thing would go right on there and put the bolt right in with no problem at all. However, on the newly designed one, it's not quite that way. This thing is a pain in the rear. Look at here. See, I can only get in at an angle. No, and so if I put my bolt in first, I can, now I still can't get the socket on the right way. See, it's, it's, it's at an angle. There's nothing I can do. I mean, I've tried everything. And you can't get up in there because you have absolutely no room to go. Oh, I am just so frustrated. Look at the top of the way this thing is designed. Totally different. Okay? Put them side by side here. This here gives you complete access to the bolt heads. This one does not. Piece of crap. We're going back to this. Now, I may have to wind up buying another one. Uh, I'm not sure I want to go with this old one. Uh, I'll look around and see what's available. And I'll come back to you uh, hopefully in another week or so, let you know what's going on with this. And we're also going to, we'll probably start out the next video by taking apart one of those calipers. Uh, we're, this is going to be a long-term project until I actually figure out the right way to do it, the easiest way to do it, and, get, and see if there's a, I'm sure I can get a rebuilt one. And I this one here probably worked fine, but I don't want to take the chance. It's old as the hills, so I think I'll, uh, I don't want to be broken down on the highway with a uh, fuel pump that's, you know, 40 years old. I, I just don't want to do that, but I think I can get one rebuilt. So until next time, this is John. Uh, since I made the last segment, 
I have spoken with Brendan and we've sat down and figured out a plan on how to re-thread that hole up in there. Not a problem. Everything's on order on the way in. But primarily, the uh, linkage and everything that we put on order, I'm going to go ahead and put the carburetor on. I got the gasket coming in. The linkage will all be hooked up. Uh, but we won't be able to actually finalize all the linkage measurements because, you know, the gas pedal has to be so high from the floor and there's a measurement here between uh, on this 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 thing that comes out right there that that uh, white bushing and uh, from there you have to have a certain distance of the rod there's a rod that goes through it you have to have a certain distance there's a clip that goes there and what that does uh, you know that sets your point at which, you know when you step on the gas that sets the point where the passing gear kicks in so there's a measurement there and a measurement on the on the gas pedal We'll have to go through all that, but the gas pedal is in pretty bad shape. It's kind of rusted inside the car, but we'll worry about that later. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and take off this bracket and get it all cleaned up and painted black along with the rest of the stuff. What the heck, you know, we got nothing else to do, right?